Hello, Floss Tube World. Hi, Morgan here from What's Morgan Stitching. Thanks for coming back and hanging out with me for another Floss Tube video. I want to be completely honest with you. I did film a video when I thought I would have time about a month ago. And um, I did post about it on my Instagram story. But a um, little story behind it was I was home alone and we hadn't yet hit daylight savings, I don't think. Um, or maybe I was just doing it really late at night and um, I kept hearing a noise and it kept creeping me out. <laughs> and so I had to keep stopping the video. Um, couldn't work out what the noise was. It sounded like a shed door or like a metal door creaking open. Um, we don't have any door like that around our property. Our neighbors don't have a door like that that surround us. So I couldn't work out what it was and it was pitch black and Nala kept barking every time. She heard it too because the house was dead quiet otherwise. Cut a long story short, I worked out either later that night or the next day um, what the noise was. It was an automatic re... Uh, Reed diffuser, no, like a automatic room spray thing, an air wick, I think is what we've got it as, um, spray thing that's in the back half of my house. The timer was still on. It was still trying to release the fumes or the, the air and the smell, um, but the canister was empty. So it was making that attempt at a spray noise and it was the mechanism that was making the like the metal grinding movement kind of creaky noise. So we worked that out and that thing went in the bin. <laughs> so I have done my best to go back through what that hot mess of a video entailed. And I think I've got it here. So we're starting again from scratch, um, which is why it's been a little bit of a longer time than I was hoping to be back. Because when I started watching that video and trying to edit it, I just... It was just manic. Like it was, I was freaked out. I was trying to play cool. You could see it on my face. Um, and then Nala kept going and barking and everything. And, you know, it would have been funny with like the revelation of what the noise was, kind of like a whodunit. Um, but anyway, so, hello. <laughs> um, it's been a busy few months. It's only gets busier and it just continues. We've had, I think, two more weddings since I was last on here, possibly a third. If I, no, I think it's only been two. Um, a bunch of birthdays, a whole bunch of hens um, and bridal showers. I don't have any makeup on and I have just finished drying my hair. We have my sister-in-law's hens tomorrow. Um, so I have really nice baked hand hands. Um, and if I put any makeup on my fake tan under my face will go and I'll look like a ghost. So sorry that you've got this to see. Um, but tomorrow we have that. And then on Sunday, we're catching up with my sister and my niece. Um, we've got a bunch of birthdays next weekend. My dad's one of my best friends, which is a 30th but it's a dress up in like a nineties, early two thousands. And I still haven't picked my costume. Um, we have a couple of options. Uh, Tim and I, for those who know Australia, um, we're leaning towards a Kath and Cal combo outfit. I can do Tim's hair in the perfect Cal swoop. And he's got a gray leather jacket. Just need to get him a man bag. Um, and then I would have to find something to go as calf, but I think finding a curly blonde wig would be pretty easy and then everything else will work. So that was one option. The other is if I can, I, could, I think I could pull it together in like a day or two, um, but getting some moving boxes and turning us into old school iPods um, and putting two songs on the iPod screen that I just print off at the, like in, on the computer, um, that were revolutionary at that time as well. The, the OG color iPods, I went crazy for my pink one. Um, so talking like 2005, I think 2004, 
Um, so that's another option. And then the third option was something that I was thinking could be easy and that Tim might be interested in was um, Team Rocket from Pokemon. But if you have any other suggestions for a 90s, early 2000s themed dress up, um, I have seven days to pull an outfit together. So let me know. Um, then we've got more hens and, and um, bucks weekends, Tim's birthday, the wedding, Christmas. It's just a frantic, frantic end of the year. I do have holidays over the Christmas period, which is delightful. Um, I don't have the full time off, so I'm not going to be filming anything like a vlogmas because I just, that's just me over committing if I say that I will do that. Um, but I do hope to be back before that, within that, that last week before Christmas. Um, and we'll see how much I can, uh, can do by then. Um, other than that, our kitchen got renovated. Is that, was that in my last video or my video before? Um, well, that got done mid-October, early mid-October. And I, so I reckon I was talking about this in my last video. Um, our kitchen got done. We are still waiting on a few pieces that are under warranty manufacturer needed to be recut. Um, they weren't even installed. The installers um, set them straight off back to the factory. They are done, but they just haven't been installed. And then once that's in, we've got to paint. Um, Tim and I wrote out, the world's longest list, um, longer than Santa's naughty list of all the things we need to finish in this house. Um, down to every detail of filling this hole, patching this old PowerPoint, painting. Um, so now that we've done all the big things, which is astounding to me that we got it done, um, now it's just actually finishing it all off. So, um, yeah, we... I want to say it close to the finish line, um, considering this has been three and a half years in the making so far, but it also has taken us three and a half years to get to this point. So, um, we just need to find the motivation. Like we need to paint essentially 90% of the house, which if we can get in the zone, we can do it in almost a weekend. It's not like full walls and ceiling. It's window frames, two rooms, which is this much of like from wall to sit from tile to ceiling. So it's not like it's a lot. We just need to find the motivation to do so. Anyway, so we um, haven't actually planned when we're going to be starting that. Tim isn't off on holidays like I am, but I think after the Christmas period, there'll be more weekends. There's a couple of like weekend jobs and things. So the kitchen's not fully finished, but when it is, I'll be sure to include some pickies to show everyone. Cause I feel like you've all kind of been on this journey with me and with us, um, this whole time, which has just been an ordeal, but, um, we're almost there. Anyway, I have, one finish, which I did show in my last, in the, the scrapped video, um, a new start and a work in progress to show you. And then I have some things in um, that I will be starting and also a question on beads. So I'm sinking in my chair. Sorry for that noise. Let's get to it. I finished golden bees by Our Forest Embroidery, finally. So this is on 32 count Belfast linen. This was fully kitted from Our Forest Embroidery. I think, I feel like I got this before everything went down in the world. Um, so you could only get it as a kit, but I believe now it's possibly available as a PDF. Um, but these are the DMC based over dies from our forest um, and just as why I got linen from them. I don't know the, I can't remember the color and the little needle, bind, needle minder that came with it. But Dunzo, 
Yay. And then stitch two over two. Um, everything is called for. And then you know how like, do you ever get that one thing in a pattern that you fall in love with or like a stitch piece that's like, I don't know, you loved how it's stitched or how it looks or the color combination or something? Because I have a favorite child with this piece and I'm sure... I'm sure I'm not the only one that ever has this, um, but this is probably the first piece that I've ever really noticed it. So we have this lovely row of bees. Very cute. But this little guy here, this one, is the perfect tone of all of the variegations. So there's three variegated threads in that B and I just feel like they're all that subtly pink, peachy kind of color to all of them. And it just is an absolute chef's kiss. It kind of is a little bit there still, but I think this one, I just managed to get all of the variegations to align in a beautiful, beautiful way. And so that is absolutely one of my favorite things that I've stitched. I just love it. <laughs> um, I now need to add this to the never ending finished but not fully finished pile. Um, I was thinking this is going to be framed and hung up maybe in the, I think I was thinking like in the toilet kind of powder room area. We've got one that goes around a corner. So I was thinking it could go somewhere, somewhere in there maybe where it's not like actually in the toilet um, or in the back hall. But in all these talks of what we're gonna be doing with the rest of the house, that back wall has somehow managed to <laughs> turn into a, a weekend reno work kind of thing. So I don't know, but that is the plan so far. So we'll see. I will hopefully have something to show you in the new year. <laughs> That's a fully finished project. There's no way my sewing machine or my finishing anything is going to be coming out before the new year. Maybe if I can align myself right, I could get some things done before Christmas in that week. I do have some Christmas ornament um, stitching whips to pull out. So maybe if I can get my butt into gear on those and stitch them in December and have a reason to pull my sewing machine out and finish things off. That could get a finish. Who knows? Uh, next is my active whip, which is Schoolhouse Quaker by Stone Street Stitchworks. I'm stitching this on a 36 count vintage country mocha mocha linen um for those of you who don't know don't mind the messy back um it is printed the fabric well at least this one is and i learned that but when i got it so it's got all this modeling on this side but then on this side it's just flat which is cool my first kind of fabric like that um so i've shown this there is a little bit more stitched up here because i've started doing some initials um, but since I last picked this one up, I have stitched all of this. I have this really funny in the Q-snap. So this is like a dead spot and I can't be bothered fixing it. Um, so I've stitched kind of to where my tension stops, like isn't annoying me. Um, and I'll finish that off when I move. I finished off this motif down here. And then this is where I'm actively working. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the full width of this um so i will need to readjust everything so i can do this bottom one and then there is like i think i think it's possibly even next to it um there's a little one of these like a half quaker motif over this side um so i'm just trying to do what i can here and then i will move it across and then i should be at about above 50%, like 55% potentially. 
Um, and then from here up is all of the rest of the initials and things that I've charted. Um, if you've been around a while, you might know what I'm stitching this for, but if not, um, I'm stitching this for my husband's grandmother. She's had, she's got a couple of embroidery works in their house that like family members or thing people have done. Um, like her mom, I think, and her sister or something like that. Um, they're also teachers, retired teachers. So I thought that this was a really fitting piece to stitch them. Um, I've changed the initials to all of their children. I wish I could fit like an initial for everyone, but I don't like that list would just never end. Um, there's partners that are separated and things and it's just a bit too hard. Um, it would have been nice if Tim was the eldest born like son or grandchild or something and I could have continued on with like the generations, but um, he's not, <laughs> so I can't. Um, so yeah, I thought it would just be nice to have his grandparents and uh, their children on here. Um, and my plan is to turn it into another pillow to go on their couch. Um, that's where the other ones are. But then I'm also not sure if I will get it professionally framed um, and do a framing thing because I probably would butcher a pillow. Um, the wedding that I would be seeing them at before Christmas is the week before, so the 16th. I actually think according to markup XP, whatever, whatever it is, if I was stitching how much I, st I stitched last night, which was only like 250 stitches. Um, and if I keep it that right, I think I should get it finished by like on that day. Um, or it might've been like the 22nd of December. So I got a hustle. We won't be seeing them on Christmas day or around Christmas day. It would only be at the wedding. So I have a feeling it's going to end up being something that I make and I wrap and I post out that way, which is fine. Um, I'd rather kind of get it done and not rush it, especially if I'm doing finish myself in a pillow. Um, I did preemptively buy a piece of fabric to go behind this if I did do a pillow. Pillow is also something I've never done. How many times can a woman say pillow in a, <laughs> in a paragraph? Um, pillow is not one that I have done. So I believe there are a few uh, tutorials online that I need to watch to figure out what pillow I want to do. Um, seems simple in my head, but I'm not creative like that. So who knows, but that's that. Um, I've touched on this before, but I just thought maybe I'd share it again. I have made changes to, I'm sorry, I'm using the cold four threads for all of this, but I've made changes to the motifs and I've brought a bit more of the other colors into the motifs. Otherwise it was gonna be a lot of this, I think it's 3031 brown, um, which is just probably a little bit boring. It's still the predominant color throughout the whole piece, but I'm pretty sure this red was only used in this building. And I'm pretty sure there's like a light, um, there's two light variegated, um, watercolors in this. And I'm pretty sure again, they're only used in that, um, building. So I'm trying to bring all those colors in kind of in other places. Um, so I've changed a few of the colors of the motifs. So yeah, that's that one. Hi, so I just uploaded everything and I was going through my old video before I deleted it and worked out I missed two rips of things that I've worked on since I last showed you. So I'm still here. Um, and I wanted to show you because I haven't shown this one in a long time, but I pulled out and got quite a bit done, quite a bit done on Quaker Snowflakes by Hello from Liz Matthews. So when you first, when I first started, I'd only done that center motif. Oh, that's really good. I should have ironed that center motif. And now I finished 
one of the two bottom bands underneath here it says Quaker Snowflakes I think I think um, and then there's another band underneath it and I have in fact reached the full height um, and so that is the top so I've got the width and I've got almost the height um, this is being stitched on a, a 38 count frost from number 12 stitch co on Etsy from Nicola and I'm using the called for thread which is MPI silks and I stitched it over one uh, sorry one strand over two and like it's really cute and dainty but like you can almost not see it <laughs> And I can't be well at fixing it. Like I've, I'm in too deep. If I see it in person, you can tell, but from a distance, maybe not so much. Um, I'm hoping that by putting the color in, it will warmth it up a little bit more. That's a really good word. Um, and like help stand out a bit more also with like a backing and oh, there you go. That's kind of more what it's like when I'm stitching it, that kind of color. Um, I'm at the point now where once I finish the thread that I have already going, I will be stitching the green trees and the bird. And then I'm doing a change of the phrase again. Um, so I stitched Quaker pumpkins um, from Hello from Liz Matthews using Megan at Georgia Girl Stitching's word conversion. So it used to say All Hallows Eve and we converted it or she converted it to Autumn Harvest. I'm going to change this one to, I think I've decided on winter snow. Um, so I can use a mix of all the alphabets that I have from Liz Matthews charts and work out which one I've got the most amount of letters and how I can make it all work. Um, and then I'm doing Quaker gardens and I think I'm changing the alphabet on that one to say spring blessings spring blooms something like that um just that way for me like it will be like a seasonal quaker design but i can have them all up but there's still a correlation between them all they'll all say the season in them um so i'm yet to chart that but um got pretty happy with the progress where i got the width and almost the entire height um and it will fit in one of my nerge hoops as a whole moving forward so when i put it back on the frame i'll be able to just go anywhere and get it done pretty quickly and then the other whip that i forgot to show is a little blast from the past it is uh duck queen of the earth um the costs in materials and fabric for me far outweigh not being able to complete this so i am pushing on pushing through um, since you've last seen it, I have, I'm pretty sure I've done her skin and her arms. I've done the hair and I've done my own version of the face. I can't remember if I stitched and showed you these two flowers. The inner of this flower here. Is that in focus? I think so. Um, the stitching, my stitching in that is some of my favorite stitching that I've ever seen. Like chef's kiss. Um, the chart came with two face options and then a third uncharted face and i've kind of pulled from that uncharted face and made it a bit more of her i really loved those eyes which don't oh that's good don't mind that um i really loved her eyes and that color in them um i am trying to work out the hair how it's going to frame around here and the top of the head um i don't love like I, I love this hair but i don't love how it sits on the head it gives me cal knight vibes from kath and kim um second reference to them for the day so look them up if you haven't um so i just for me want to change it but i'm not sure what um so part of me is working on well i've obviously put it away but my plan was to work on blending in the hair um, and kind of taking a bit of creative license from 
Dark Queen of the Earth face because that hair has like a side part. Um, so just trying to work out how I can kind of use these colors and this style, but how to shade it best. So just trying to work from that. Um, didn't realize how messy my ends were everywhere. So that's also great. The other thing too is I don't love the horns. So I don't think I'm going to stitch them. Um, I'm going to try and work out if there's a way that I can do a bit more of like a crown of thorns style tiara um, and use the beads in that tiara um, to make the thorns. Um, there's also a couple of ideas that I've seen in the Facebook group um, and also from the Dark Queen of the Earth, no, the C Facebook group um, crowns. So I've got a few options of what I'm going to do. I just don't know how to do them. So that's my other whip that I put some time into between my last video and this one. And then I have a new start, which is all in this little project bag that was gifted to me from Bernie. It is the uh, Bella Filipina Cross Five Delicious Yummy Fibers um, Mermaids of the Season Stitch Along. I did finally start and sad to say, well not sad to say I made the right decision, but I am not using a Five Delicious fabric. I had three color options that were close enough to the called for of a Fibrilicious, but like conversion plus getting it shipped here, it would have cost me $100 just for that fabric. So I went through my stash and I found a few fabric of the months from Fibrilicious, um, but then I also found this D stash piece of fabric. So it is a Color Cascades fabric um, who is... I'm going to go ahead and say no longer in business. Um, and it is a 32 count Lugana. And I have the color card. Dark Fantasy. It's the color. And I made a little start and well, I guess a finish. This is my fabric, so it is like a green, purple, and blue, mainly blue, but it's got some greens and a little bit of purple. And I have completely finished spring. I don't get what's going on with the lights here, but all beaded, all stitched, all backstitched, all sparkly, all beautiful. Yay! Why is it? Sorry, two seconds. I wonder if this will help. Probably not. I don't think that changed anything. Um, I started on the border and I've done the writing for summer and I've managed to get all of the, well, no, like I stopped when the thread ran out, but I got all of the actual border done. Um, I was stupid and I beaded before I had um, a Q-snap or something that could hold essentially this whole width. Um, so I have stopped and the whole reason that I actually picked this up was because the Q-snap is wide enough for this. So I wanna get this whole section done so that then I can change frames for this and put, oh, that's a needle, um, and put this in the Q-snap and work on summer while we're in summer in Australia. It's cute that I did spring while we're in spring in Australia. Um, and then I'll start working on autumn, which only just got um, released, I think, yesterday. So... Just again, there you go. That's a bit more accurate of the fabric. I guess the only thing you can't really see, and it's probably because of where I'm sitting, is the green kind of undertones in the fabric, but it is there, there is a little bit to it. So, um, and it's probably actually a little bit, there you go, like that kind of color. 
Um, I'm stitching with all the called for beads and the called for DMC, but I've done, I've used the um, petite treasure braid conversions for the chronic. So I'm not using chronic, I'm using petite treasure braid. And then this is such a mess. Um, beads, which I just found. I got another little delivery of beads from Jan Janet at JK's Cross Stitch. They always come with little needle minders. That's a cute little smiley sunflower face. And I want that one out now. Um, hello, the prettiest color beads I've ever seen in my life. I'm guessing they are going to be for winter they're very pretty so let's put all this away for safekeeping um i don't understand how people stitch these so fast like i don't think i'm a slow stitcher and i don't compare but like someone's already basically done they're like i'll get this done in two days like, how it took me like two weeks to 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 do spring how I've done this so wrong. Sorry. Bear with me. Play some elevator music. Okay. So that's that one. Then. My question. I might segue that those beads onto my question of beads. So. At the moment. I'm storing all of my beads in these little duba wacky. This is essentially all of them. And. Once I take out all of those other beads and put them in here when I'm finished, this is going to be overflowing and I'm going to need like two or three. So I have one of these, which is just from Spotlight. It's these little containers. I actually got it ages ago. I found it in my thing, in my cupboard, and I started using them originally for all my needle minders. Like that one would have been the perfect size for it, but they all started stupidly magnetizing to each other. So I bought a whiteboard magnety thing for it to go on the back of my cupboard door. Um, so I have two of these. And so my theory was if I can label these and put the beads in them, and I've got a couple of duplicates, which I feel a bit silly about because I've used them in other Bella Filipinas. And this is, it seems to be quite consistent that they kind of pull from the same sort of beads or um, petite treasure braids and whatever. So I've got two packets of these. One's already on the go. I've got two packets of these. One's on the go. I was thinking, and what I would like to know is... I'm thinking of putting these inside of these. I think these will obviously naturally hold more beads. So if I have double packets, I can put two packets into these little containers. Is, am I, I'm definitely overthinking this now that I think it out loud. Is it an issue to combine two packets and consolidate them and then not know how many packets I have left? And do dye lots matter on Mill Hill beads. That's what I would love to know. So I'm going to check on my dog. I'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, she got herself trapped in, in our spare room. So had to go rescue. Anyway, is it a problem to combine packets together and have um, different dye lots of beads i don't think it is i think it's kind of going to be one of those do what you want um but yeah just interested to know like i found look at how yellow that packaging is i found those and they're like ancient but then i got i got a new packet and the color's the same inside not with the yellow tinge so Anyway, that's just something else I need to find time for, just like organizing all of my DMC. Um, and then I got some fabric. I also, oh, I don't have it on, I've got a t-shirt. Um, I won a little prize in the um, 
Winter in Stars Hollow uh, digital retreat from the Black Needle Society. And one of them was this piece of fabric, which I just unraveled and I will show you properly. Um, just playing with it, sorry. So it is a fiber on the whim piece of Merlot. It's beautiful. When I first saw this piece, I thought to myself, great, that is exactly what I need to stitch Holly Berry Pixie um, from Bella Filipina. And then I actually completely forgot that I was getting this. I'd also want a t-shirt at the time that was being made by Athena at Stitching Goddess Designs. Um, and I knew that there was a delay there. That was all fine. But I just, I'd completely forgotten about this. Um, and so I brought another fabric that I was going to use. And then I got the shipping notification and I was very excited for this. And I hadn't started Holy Berry Pixie. So I was thinking, great, this fabric's coming in. I'll, I'll see um, which one I like best. And what I didn't realize was this piece of fabric is a scarf. I've never seen fabric cut like this. So I can't stitch Holly Berry Pixie on this. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on this, but I think it is still one of those good cut pieces where like it's going to come in handy for smalls or little things. Um, it is a nine by 52, 28 count Lugana. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to stitch with it. Um, but it's a beautiful color. It would do well for a couple of like, if I had this color, actually I think I do like Christmas ornaments, um, or yeah, a small, um, or something that I can maybe stitch my niece's name into like as a little wall thing. One of my best friends is having a baby girl. So maybe I could do that. So I've still got lots of possibilities, um, or like a really thin band piece you've got any tips let me know and then I got some fabric from 123 stitch and I did buy it from there because I wanted it to be just a couple of their off-cut pieces first one which I think is gonna be really hard to show is a 16th yard of 36 count ocean air linen so it's like a really soft blue gray my intentions with this one is to stitch Sunny Friends by Georgia Girl Stitching Designs, um, which is a little sunny beach Christmas ornament scene with Frosty the Snowman. Um, so I don't need to make any changes to it to make it like Australian Christmassy because it's got a Christmas tree, it's got a reindeer, it's, no, it's got a palm tree. Um, so I'm very excited to stitch that one and add that to my Christmas stitching ornaments that I haven't exactly finished, but I've been stitching. Um, so that is something I'm going to be working on in December. That is, a very, I think it's going to be like a possibly a one day stitch on one of my days off. And I'm just going to be using what is in my fabric, my floss stash, a mix of DMC or over dyes or something. So that's that one. And then the other piece I got was an eighth of dwarf Newcastle linen. Okay. I don't remember that I ordered that as the color, but sure. And it is this dark blue sky kind of color. And this piece here is what I intend to stitch my smalls exchange piece on for uh, winter in stars hollow. Um, this time around, I will document it much better and actually show you once I've stitched it. Um, but I do intend to stitch it on this. It is essentially just wording. So, um, I will just be pulling from stash again for that one. Um, and I want to actually stitch that pretty soon because we do have a bit of a deadline of when we need to send them by. So that will probably become a focus piece. And again, like a day or two stitching, I think, um, 
like a weekend or something. Who has weekends? Not me. So that's that one. I think also the reason I brought this piece, which you can't tell is somewhat blue. Maybe you can. I was thinking of if this could work for You Are My Sunshine by Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, because the call for fabric to me just does not exist. I've never been able to find a color and cotton piece. I can't remember what it is called. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, like I was looking on the website and I was thinking this is probably close enough. It doesn't have much modeling to it, but I think that's where maybe the thread will shine, um, when I pick a color. So I'll get there with it eventually. Um, I think that's everything. I think if it's not, I'll write it down and I'll add it to my next video. Otherwise, thank you for staying tuned for another video. I hope you have a wonderful weekend where you are. Um, and I'll be back in about, I'm going to say about a month to round out the end of the year. Um, we'll probably pull out all of my 2023 finishes, all of my whips and just do a recap of the whole year, um, rather than waiting until January. I think I could probably do it also in January. Um, but we'll just see where I'm at with everything. Um, and yeah, other than that, thanks for hanging out with me. Happy weekend. Happy stitching. Stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Yeah.